going on, everyone, from Low Kick MMA? My name is Dan Podolsky. I'm joined with Alex Morono. He is set to return this weekend at UFC Charlotte when he takes on Tim Means. Alex, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, yeah, you got it, man. It's kind of nice to have these uh, interviews to do to, you know, kill time during the fight. There's a lot of waiting around. I feel that. And, you know, just first off, how is it being in Charlotte? How's the weight cut going? And how's training been going? Yeah, Charlotte's not bad. It's, you know, we're from Houston and it's actually storming pretty bad. My wife keeps telling me. So the weather here is really, really nice. Um, And plus, you know, I get to fight in the U.S., which is always, you know, ideal not having to travel too much. Uh, and again, weight cuts good, you know, minimal, average, you know, looking forward to Saturday. And, you know, you talk about that travel a lot. Is it nice for you still to be in front of fans for a third straight fight instead of at the Apex? Yeah, I didn't realize how much more fun the, uh, the the packed arena fights were. Like, I didn't mind fighting at Apex. That was like a cool time in UFC history. But uh, when I had my first fight back in front of the fans in Dallas, it, like the energy was just different. It was better. It was more fun. And, uh, and yeah, I enjoy that more for sure. And you talk about being in Dallas. How is that for you, you know, being in front of your home fans? And is it different for you at all kind of going on the road for this fight? Uh, no. So I'm actually from Houston, which is about a three hour drive south from Dallas Got it. And, and at Fortis, which is in Dallas. So I drive up there all the time. So like Dallas to me is a really cool martial arts city because like I pretty much just train up there and then get to go fight up there. So, uh, so yeah, it was great. And it was close enough to where I had a lot of people go and, and watch and, uh, and it was close enough to drive there and drive home. So we had a car. I mean, it was, it was awesome. Uh, anything in Texas is super ideal. And you talk about training at Fortis. How does that help you and who've been your main sort of go-to partners for this fight? Yeah, just, uh, you, you know, coach safe. I mean, he's very recognizable for, for what he's able to, to do inside the cage, but uh, his guidance is awesome. And then, uh, man, I was just, there's a lot of the really a lot of really good active welterweights. Uh, you know, Julius Holmes just fought in Fury. He won his decision. You know, Jeff Neal is probably the, the, the hardest hitting, sharpest southpaw you gotta ever find. They got a, a new good wrestler from a from a AKA, I think he's from Cali, uh, Kyle Crutchman. He's great. Ramez is the man. So man, it's been a lot of good training up there. And then it's been a lot of really good training in Houston as well. And so for this fight, you know, how much have you gotten to watch on Tim Means? Both of you guys are, you know, veterans of the welterweight division and what do you think gives you the advantage over him? Yeah, I've actually watched all of his fights live. I'd root for him a lot of them. Uh, figured this matchup would happen a long time coming. And, uh, and man, yeah, he just, he's just super crafty. He's super gritty. Um, he'll, he'll come forward and he'll throw hands. So I think this will be a fun fight for the fans, but also a fight where, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to also look to be the aggressor just to make sure he doesn't get too, uh, too forward heavy. So this will be a fun one. This will be a hard fight. I'm expecting a, a very challenging fight. I do want to ask about Jeff Neal because – have you a got has he been you know a big sparring partner for you and coming off his you know fight of the night fight of the year contender with Shavkat where do you see him going next and you know just how do you see his trajectory in the UFC? Yeah, Jeff's the man. I, I got a lot of rounds in with him this camp. Always thankful for that. Um, I mean he, he's you know easily championship material for you know the welterweight class. You know him fighting anyone in the top ten, I, I think is fun. I think there are some matchups that are more fun than others. I know he took a, you know, he took that Shabkat fight. That was not an easy fight to take, like a risky fight. You know, rewarding, sure, but man, his stock went up after that scrap. That was one of the best fights you'll ever see. And uh, and I'm not too sure, man. I I, I always enjoy watching him fight. So uh, whatever's next, I'll be there to help him train and always uh, always watch. You know, wanting to watch him win. And so for you, you know, you been the UFC for a while, kind of a stable of the welterweight division and just just outside the top 15, what do you kind of have to change a little bit to get into that rankings and be able to make that run to contention? Uh, you know, just in MMA, no matter the rankings, just winning is it's just everything. It's the most valuable thing you can do. So uh, just maximizing preparation to uh, increase that win percentage and, you know, keep winning fights, keep cashing checks. And uh, and, and again, man, I've always been pretty, pretty like easy on the goals you know, one fight at a time. A streak is awesome. You know, put a streak together to keep winning fights. Do you think that you get overlooked a little bit because you're not, you know, someone who's going to go out there and call out the biggest names? Do you think that's kind of hurt you a little bit in terms of like being? No, not, not necessarily. You know, I've I've never had a a lack of like fight offers or, or you know fights being accepted. And just like personally, I'm not a, you know, I almost prefer, you know, flying under the radar and, and not getting a lot of attention and just kind of, you know, doing my thing, coaching, and being with the family and then fighting every, uh, every few months. I wish I could be a little more active, but I mean, other than that, it's no, I don't mind that at all. 
it's interesting to hear you say that because you're someone who's been very active since you've gone to the UFC. Are you, you know, do you pride yourself on kind of taking all those fights? You've taken a lot of short notice fights and how busy do you want to be in 2023? Yeah, I actually almost prefer the short notice fights all day. If I had a full fight camp for this fight and it was fun, but like my, you know, body definitely gets, you know, dinged up a little bit more and I'm always training, always training. And if I'm not getting ready for a fight, I'm getting my guys ready for a fight or just training to have some fun. And uh, body durability has always been maybe my my best factor. And uh, yeah, so I mean, if I could fight three or four times a year, that would be awesome. You know, on average, I fight two or three times, which is fine. But if I could increase that by a little bit, you know, that'd be cool. Especially, you know, being in like the prime of my athletic life right now. I want to make the most out of these years. And as I say, because, you know, you're 32 years old. How much longer do you see yourself sort of competing? And what, what do you still want to accomplish by the time, you know, you're, it's all said and done? Uh, more than anything, I just enjoy the process. I enjoy the emotions, the challenge, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the you know, winning the fights is just so rewarding, you know, both like, you know, personally and, you know, just from, from every, you know, aspect. So winning the fights is awesome. And I, I told my coach this, I'll keep fighting so long as I can keep winning. If I'm winning fights, I'm going to keep fighting. Fair enough. And, you know, you've been in there with some big names, you know, Ponzi Nibio, Cowboy Cerrone. If I were to ask you, if there's one sort of like dream fight that you have by the end of your career, who is that guy? Man, yeah, guys ask me that question all the time. Uh, uh, that's kind of hard to answer. I don't really know. Um, just from like a martial arts perspective, a fight with Wonder Boy would be would be awesome, uh, very challenging and, and you know attainable. But you know, I I don't really care honestly. Fair enough. And then you know, I won't take up too much of your time. Just my final question, you know. This Saturday, Tim Means, Alex Moreno. Alex, how does this fight go down? Uh, it's funny. I get to give the same answer every interview, every opponent. But you know, I'm always going for that knockout. So I'm expecting a three round war. And if I can, if I can, you know, catch a finish in the mix, then awesome. But just just a banger up a scrap for sure. Fair enough, Alex. I'm wishing you the best of luck, guys. Alex Moreno returns to the octagon this Saturday when he takes on Tim Means in Charlotte. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, you got it, man. Take it easy. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.